This is Bob Anderson from uh, Factory Direct Modulars. Uh, I'm here to do the October 2022 market update report. Um, <laughs> I have uh, quite a few things to cover, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna just start off with uh, the, probably the hottest topic, and that is. Um, you know, interest rates. Um, yeah. Uh, for those of you that are in construction with me right now, I can, I, I can take, take my thank you letters anytime for having you get a construction perm loan instead of a two-time close because <laughs> this is why you get a construction perm loan. When you got insanity in the Federal Reserve and in Washington and in the Treasury, I mean, you know, why put yourself at risk? Anyways, um, so one of the things I can I can attest to right at this moment that is that has struck me in the last probably about two three weeks was uh, I noticed that my buyer demographic had been changing and. Um, what I mean by that is I had to go, I, I, I get phone calls all the time. People asking this, asking that, can I do this? Can I do that? What's this kind of house? Da, 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 da. And it's just part of my job is to, is to educate people. By the way, this YouTube channel does, does a great job for me, um, in doing that. But anyways, um, so I started noticing a trend and I went back and did some research and I figured out that five, five of the last seven customers that I've, that I've ordered a house for, sold a house to, whatnot, were paying cash, um, i.e. not getting a, a loan at all from a bank. So, um, that, by the way, that's, that was not the premise of this business when I started it. Um, the premise of this business when I started it was to uh, was to provide an affordable solution to to middle class Americans who are most likely the ones to get taken advantage of by organizations like Clayton Homes, and um, you know, I uh, I I. You know, I, I don't I don't uh, condone the business practices that they that they adhere to, and um, but when I but when my trend is five of seven is cash customers, um, I'm not really touching that market anymore, um, and I but I think I'm not touching that market anymore because there's so much. Um, there's so much instability in the interest rates right now, <clears throat> which I fully understand. And I don't, I don't have an answer for that. And, and I'm going to tell you something that you may, that you don't know. I mean, I used to many, many years ago, I used to package loans and sell them on wall street. As a matter of fact, for Oakwood, i.e. Clayton. That's why I know way too much about their organization. And so I used to sell, this was back in the late 90s, I used to sell, you know, about $150, $200 million in loans through Wall Street a month. And um, one of the things that, that you need when you're selling loans is you need stability and rates so that you know what the premiums are and whatnot that you're going to get paid by Wall Street. One of the problems that all the banks are dealing with right now, the mortgage companies, whatnot, is rates are going up so fast that by the time they close the loan, they package it up, they get it insured, they bring it to Wall Street and they go to sell it, they're probably gonna be losing money. So they don't even know how to price their loans anymore. Um, so it's, it's a bad situation for the banks. So the rates at the, at the mortgage companies are actually going up faster than even the treasury yields, the 10-year the 10-year note that the Federal Reserve is screwing around with. 
Um, and it's because of the uncertainty of have we peaked or are we continuing to go that direction? And um, I mean, I can't, I don't know. Uh, I can't answer that question even myself. Um, I do know this. <laughs> all this was intentional. Um, it was all intentional. Long story behind why this was intentional, but all everything going on with interest rates and inflation and all that, it was 100% intentional. These people are not that stupid. They may look stupid, but they're not that stupid. Anyway, so rates, I think, are, are impacting the buyers, my buyers even, uh, my, my financing buyers. It's not slowing down my business. I'm still, um, I believe right at 80% or so of my capacity for next year right now. Anyways, um, another thing I want to touch on when I say the premise of me starting this business uh, was, to, to, was to try to help that middle-class American. Another, another thing about back when I started this business was um, we had a different market then in terms of contractors. I used to get phone calls Bob, you got any work for us? Bob, you got anything you need me to do? Bob, I'll do anything. You know, contractors would call all the time because, um, <clears throat> A, we, we pay extremely fast. I mean, that's part of keeping contractors interested in doing business with you. And B, um, you know, I know what it's like to be a contractor. My dad is a 50-year master electrician. So, I mean, I know that, that, get, that getting paid for your work is, is, is very important. Um, so I, I used to get those calls all the time. And so I, I allowed my business to expand into things that I had never intended in the first place. Let me give you some examples. Things like garages, things like big, huge covered porches, things like, uh, things like uh, uh, paved driveways, just things that I did not have this business set up for. You got to remember, I'm not sitting there with fifty, sixty thousand dollars in profit that your average retailer is to do these houses. These are wholesale prices. You don't believe me? Go do some, go do some price analysis compared to compared to us. Make sure you're comparing an apple to an apple. Make sure they're not excluding the heating and air or something like that when they're telling you what something costs. Um. So, my but. I allowed my business to stretch into that stuff because contractors were always calling. And, I, and again, I, I, I have a passion for contractors. Again, my dad, 50-year master electrician. I used to pull wires through houses when I was eight years old. I know what it's like. And so if I could generate business for these people and give that to, to them, great. Another thing is I've always done it with zero dollars in override. Zero dollars in override. So here I am sitting here with a GC license doing a $30,000 garage and I'm not charging your 10, 15% override because I'm a GC, woohoo. No, I'm charging you what it costs to build that. Um, I don't need to steal people's money. That's not what this business is about. But at the same time, uh, now, that, now that I've got a situation where no matter how many contractors I call, None of them return your call. None of them get back to you. None of them do the freaking work that they tell you they're going to do. I have to, I have to scale back this type of business. I need to go back to the basics of here's your house. Here's your steps and decks. Here's your heating and air. Here's your delivery set and trim. The things that I have control over, the things that I have uh, um, as much ability to execute as I can, like I did the day I started this business. Because right now we live in a country where, well, Americans don't work. If you don't know that, well, then you're not paying attention. And um, so I don't get phone calls from contractors anymore asking me, hey, do you got any work? So I'm going to be scaling back some of the some of the builds that I'm looking at in the future because I'm just can't handle it. I can't handle it. Give you a perfect example. I have a contractor I just built a house for. Uh, not far from, from uh, Central North Carolina where I live. And um, he got with me and he says, well, what, you know, I want this kind of porch. I want this kind of deck, da, 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 da. 
and I had my my quote unquote contacts give me some prices and and timelines, estimated timelines. Well, he didn't like the estimated timeline, so he went out and found his own people. I said, Great, good. So we just happened to be talking one day. I said, Well, what did you pay for these for these for this these decks and these Porsches? He's like, Oh, I paid four grand more than your guy would charge me. Okay. And then like this, I and, and this I paid, you know, four grand more than your guy charged. And this I paid. So here was a person who was willing to pay more. He had contacts, but even his own contacts were going to cost him more than my contacts. But they were going to do it in a faster timeline. Well, why were they going to do it on a faster timeline? Because they're going to make $4,000 more doing your job this week than they do in the open market. And that's what I'm trying to avoid doing to my customers. If I had $60,000 in profit in these deals, I could probably get them to move a little faster. Because I could pay a contractor four grand more to, to, bump, to bump your project ahead of everybody else's. And it wouldn't really matter to me at the end of the day. Instead of making $60,000 more, I'll make 56 grand more. Woohoo! You know, but the funny part is, I, I set a house last Monday. On my way to go see that, to go see the house get set for a customer, literally on the same street, I drove by a modular that was sitting on a foundation that wasn't done. And I pulled up to that modular and it was, a, and it was, it was an HBS preferred series house sitting on a foundation in a field from one of my competitors. The grass in the yard was over my waist. The house was sitting there, no heating and air, no plumbing elect electrical, no steps and decks. It was just set and dried in and that's it. So my point is even my contractors charging $60,000 more than me can't get their projects done either. When the How long does it take the grass to get this damn high? I mean, it doesn't take it that long, but that means nobody's been on that job. When I drove into that field, I was, I was, I, I was Daniel Boone. I was Davy Crockett. I was clearing the path. It's pretty sad. But anyways, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to scale back and quit doing these things for people that I just can't, I can't get done. If you find somebody to do these things for you and you need me to finance it. Or whatever, that's one thing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have to scale back on all these huge decks and, and elaborate garages and all that kind of stuff. I'm just not doing it. Um, I have too many buildings that I could be doing for people that just need me to build them a house. Um, and then let's add to that building officials themselves. These have to be the most incompetent people that are that are that are allowed to be in the industry right now. I mean, I understand a bunch of them retired when COVID happened, but the people they replaced them with, oh my God. And 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 a and a and a and a and a care in the world, none. It's unbelievable. Um houses, I've got houses everywhere. I can't get building officials to even give me a building permit. <laughs> it's just it's just unbelievable. You know, I still have some counties that I can apply for a building permit. Now let this sink in real slowly. I can apply for a building permit with a handwritten with a handwritten layout of what we're going to do and get the permit in three days. I got other counties where I'll pay $3,000 for a survey, get it all done, everything submitted in, and three months later, I still haven't even gotten somebody to look at it. <laughs> Anyways. Last thing I want to talk about is uh, is factory backlogs. Um, rumor mill, I, I got this directly from a VP at Clayton. Actually, it's not a rumor mill. <laughs> it's not a rumor mill, it's a fact. Uh, there's people that uh, are figuring out these facts today. Matter of fact, I even got a phone call about it like this was news. But the bottom line is Clayton, uh, Clayton Homes, who's you know, the largest retailer of manufactured modular homes in, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, for sure. Um, their manufacturing facilities have, have caught up with their backlog. So they're like six to eight weeks out. If you order a house from certain 
factories. Anyways, my point about that is they have made a major shift, like leaving a bride at the, uh, at the altar, away from the independent manufacturing uh, organizations that are out there, like HBS, like Crestline, like Champion. Um, and uh, gee, some of them are actually shocked by that. No, this was going to happen all along. When Clayton got backlogged, and they couldn't get houses out of their own manufacturing facilities. You know, they drive around like they're so mighty important and so so everything, so all-powerful. All and they went into every one of these factories and screwed everything up. Because they took the backlogs and blew them out and ordered houses that weren't even going to be built for anybody. And just, just, we call them ghost orders. I mean, they just did shit like that and ruined everything. But, you know, like, not like they care. And then, and then now that their facilities are straightened out again, huh? You mean who? We no, we don't want to order any houses from you. I mean, <laughs> anyways, it's just one of those frustrations. So my backlog hopefully will be will be straightening out quite a bit here soon, um, because mostly because the big dog has left the freaking has left the building. Um, Rumor has it I still built more houses than that big dog at HBS as a whole for the year. So, hey, I guess you're looking at the big dog. Anyways, that's my uh, industry update report. I know it went long. I know I covered a lot of stuff, and I really didn't cover anything. Um, I feel for anybody out there that's looking to get a house financed right now, and, I, and, and, and if you're if you um, pause your your desire to build a house right now, I don't blame you. <clears throat> um, just know I'm doing whatever I can on my end to keep the prices stable. Um, and there's, a, like I said, there's a reason I do construction of perms. I, I, all the people that are out there with some of these independent dealers that I know who have their houses in construction without their perm loan closed, because they're doing two time closes, I feel very sorry for you because you were doing business with a lazy retailer that wanted to do it the easy way, which is now gonna cost you a tremendous amount of money in your mortgage payments. Anyways, that's it from Factory Direct Modulars. I will talk to you later, bye. I, well, did I get